Hey there. So this is Mark. And um, the reason I'm, I'm recording this right now in my car is because I just posted a blog. And I thought it might be good to have sort of an explanation on my YouTube channel as well about what I blogged about. So think of this as like a summary vlog of my blog. Vlog, blog. Um, and I had mentioned in a previous, uh, my last vlog that I was explain uh, how I lost weight. Um, but in order to explain how I lost weight, I have to explain some things that happened over the past 12 years, uh, which is basically this battle I've had with joint inflammation and joint pain uh, for the past um, over a decade now. So going back even further, when I was a kid, and this will, you'll understand why I'm telling you this in a later video, but when I was a little kid, I had a tonsillitis. I had really bad, uh, bad tonsils, and I would get this bacterial infection and fevers and stuff every month for like two years. They, my doctor would give me this huge, I mean, at the time they felt like they were this big, but big pink penicillin pills. And so I'd be taking penicillin on a monthly basis for a good year and a half or two years of my life until I turned 10 years old and I finally got my tonsils out. Uh, no tonsils. Um, and, and that took care of the problem. But because I've been taking so many antibiotics, I'm sure it completely messed up my whole system. And that would end up causing problems down the line later on. But fast forward, um, in my mid twenties, late twenties, doing wushu a lot, um, uh, which causes some joint issues in my legs. And I think as a result of, you know, tearing my ACL and getting surgery, it, it caused a inclination for my joints to have issues which would play in later after I moved to China. So in 2005, August 8th, I think it was, I moved to China, Shanghai. And oh, it was stressful. I mean, looking back, I realized just how stressful it was. At the time I thought, oh no, this is just China. It's a crazy place. It's, I can handle it. I can do, deal with this. But I was stressed out all the time. And I didn't realize that it was just, you know, having such an incredible effect on my system. It was really, making me sick and I didn't know it at the time um, coincidentally just a few months after I moved to Shanghai like uh, November or October I got this really bad knee inflammation maybe even September so like a month or two later I got this big knee inflammation and I was like oh what the heck's going on it feels kind of like when I busted it so I thought oh maybe I did something to my knee uh, when I was in Beijing I went to Shishahai the sports school where the Beijing team trains and the doctor there gave me uh, some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory pills. And so I took that and I was like, oh, it helped it, it reduce the inflammation. That's great. So I, I remembered the, the label and I took the box around with me so I could get them again from the pharmacy. So this would continue for most the rest of the time I'm in Shanghai. Whenever I get this inflammation, I would take something. And I kept wondering, what is this? What's going on? Why am I getting this joint inflammation? It's really painful. It's hard to walk. But then it would go away after like a week or two. And I'd be like, so strange. Um, in 2007, I moved to Hong Kong, and it was around that time that I first heard the term gout, and I was like, oh, I think this is what I have. This is like a joint inf inflammation thing. Maybe it's gout. Maybe someone said the word to me or something. So I was like, oh, maybe I have gout. So I, I started to believe that that's what was going on. It was gout. It turned out it wasn't gout, but that's what I thought it was. Uh, in Hong Kong, if Shanghai was like a 10 on the stress scale, Hong Kong was like a 20. It was ridiculous out of 10. So I was just stressed out all the time and it just ate away at my system. I started getting really bad joint inflammation, like multiple joints simultaneously. I was on crutches a lot, uh, using a cane minimally. Uh, it was just, I was hobbling around to the bus to go home and back to work. It was miserable. and. I'm not the kind of person who wants to complain excessively about things or make se things seem really bad because, you know, who, no, everyone just is concerned with their own situation. No one really cares. So complaining about it wasn't going to change anything. So it doesn't help to complain. Um, and so I'm guessing the people I, I was working with were probably like thought I was calling in sick a lot when I really wasn't. But I was miserable and in extreme pain all the time. It was horrible. Um, and so around this time, I started to believe, okay, I have gout. That's my belief. 
I started doing things that uh, I read about that were related to gout. And, uh, but it turned out, it was interesting. One time I, was, I got sick, I had a fever, and, and while I was having this joint inflammation, so I went to the doctor and they gave me a um, antibiotic to get rid of the bacterial infection. And so I took this antibiotic and it helped the inflammation, it started going away. And uh, I took two courses of the antibiotics and it flushed it out. And I was like, oh, this must be bacterial in nature then. And I noticed it is always kind of warm, the joints warm oftentimes. So maybe it's a bacterial infection in my joint. So that's what I started to believe. At the time I didn't realize that the thing causing the bacterial infection and the thing causing the inflammation were the same thing. It wasn't, bacteria wasn't causing the inflammation, but I didn't realize that at the time. So I started to believe that my problem was bacterial in nature. And I believed that for like the next eight years or nine years. Um, so whenever I would get a problem with my inflammation, I would take some antibiotics, at least when I had them accessible. At the end of 2008, I couldn't handle the stress anymore, so I left Hong Kong, went back to the U.S. to kind of visit family, relax a bit. That helped. I started feeling a lot better. 2009, I was even training again. And in the summer of 2009, I went to Shanghai, uh, to Beijing to train, uh, Wushu, and feeling a lot better. Got married in September 2009. And after I got married, we moved to Xi'an in China, my wife and I. And Xi'an, I started getting the inflammation again. And I noticed there were three things that would trigger this inflammation. It was a lack of sleep, which I believe, you know, reduced my immune system. So it was an immune issue. Like I, my immune system would go down, which would open up the way to what I thought was a bacterial infection, which would get in my joints. And then, um, so I thought it was a lack of sleep an increase of stress, and I also assumed it was food related, but I didn't understand which foods triggered it because sometimes I would eat very clean and I would still get it, and sometimes I would eat not clean and I wouldn't get it. So it seemed like food was a secondary measure. So I assumed that the primary thing was my, uh, whether or not I was getting sick and not getting enough sleep and stress. So those are the things I, I attributed most to, which I was more or less correct, but not completely. Um, of course, I was in Xi'an. In China, you can get um, antibiotics and anti-inflammatories over the counter in pharmacies. So anytime I get a flare-up, I take some antibiotics and it would kind of flush it out and some anti-inflammatories. And I just thought it was a bacterial infection. I thought that for the four years I was in Xi'an. Um, and it didn't happen all the time. It would come every maybe four months or so. So I get it like three or four times a year. It was painful, but um, it would sometimes go away after a week or two, so uh, it was, it was uh, weird. <laughs> so then I moved, uh, in 2013, we moved to Hawaii, to a small island, only 7,000 people on it, very relaxing, very laid back, and that helped a lot. Now I started only getting it like once every six months or so. And it was around mid, and, and the doctor I was seeing there, um, thanks to Obama here, um, I started to, uh, I got some blood tests and they said, yeah, my uric acid levels are high. So they started prescribing gout medication, like Coltracine and stuff. But it turns out it really wasn't gout. I did have gout, but the gout was very different than this thing. And I started to be able to identify the differences. Like gout feels a very certain way. Extreme, I would liken gout to like a fire in a small joint. And I would liken this other thing to like a warm explosion in a big joint if that makes sense. So one is more large and, in, and sort of intense and the other one is very small and precise, the types of pain. So um, one time the doctor gave me these steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, methylprednisone, um, which you take on this like degrading scale over six days. You take six pills, then five, then four, then three, anyway. Uh, that helped a lot, that completely cleared out. It was, it was like, oh my God, this is, stuff is amazing. Um, but at the time I had no idea what what the steroidal anti-inflammatory actually does. It turns out it suppresses your immune system, but I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know that until recently, actually. And it was around the time I got a, a different PCP, primary care physician, that I, I heard the term autoimmune uh, disease. And, I was, and someone mentioned, maybe it's your immune system, like attacking your body. I was like, that's a thing? Well, I never heard of that. So <laughs> I... Um, and the, the new doctor I was seeing uh, practiced integrative medicine. So it, he, 
it's a holistic approach to medicine, not just you know drugs and stuff, but looking at alternative methods for treating illnesses and, and problems and looking at the core issues. And he said, yeah, it might be an autoimmune problem. Maybe you should see a rheumatologist. Maybe it's arthritis. And I said, I was thinking to myself, arthritis? I'm like 40 something, I'm mid 40s. Why would I have arthritis at my age? Not realizing what, that he was referring to rheumatoid arthritis, not like arthritis, like the other kind of arthritis that you get in your fingers and stuff. So um, I kind of balked at it because I, I figured I knew what was going on. I knew what the problem was. It, the problem was I had a bacterial joint infection that would come up whenever my stress was high my nutrition was poor and my immune system was was having issues, none of sleep or whatever. And I was convinced of that for quite a while. I would get these bouts every six months or so. So it wasn't like an urgent thing because it would happen, I get some medication, it would go away after a couple of weeks. Until I moved to Oahu. When I moved over here, I became very busy and I had a lot of stuff on my plate. I had three jobs, I was coaching Wushu, I was commuting between two islands, I was chairman of the Honolulu Local Spiritual Assembly for the Baha'i Faith. I was um, doing a lot. I was in school full time, taking four classes with a heavy load. Um, it was very stressful. Work was stressful, money was stressful, everything stressful. And of course, by about May, after five months of living here, six months, boom, it happened. I got a really bad infection or inflammation in my knee, my left leg. And at first I thought it was gonna be like the other ones, but it got worse. It got to the Hong Kong level of, of, of painful in my left leg. It didn't go anywhere else. It was always just in my left leg, which is really weird because usually it would move around. But this is only my left leg. So I didn't know what was going on, but I made a decision. I was tired. After 12 years of this pain, I was tired of living with it. And I decided there and then, like around May 28th or so, May 29th, 30th, that I was going to nip this thing in the bud. No more, never again. I was gonna change everything about what I did. My nutrition, my stress levels, everything from the ground up. And I started to do that. And uh, because medication wasn't helping, it was still hurt. And so um, I changed everything. And everything changed. <laughs> And it's one of the primary reasons I lost a lot of weight. Um, but I want to get into that in a, in a later video because this is already over 12 minutes. So um, I'll continue the next time and talk about what happened from that point on and how I changed things and how it changed me. And uh, I'll give you some more details. But I wanted to at least provide context so that when I talk about how I lost a lot of weight, it makes sense and you understand all the back history of how things happen so that's that in a nutshell i hope uh, it was at least mildly entertaining or interesting to you um if you have any comments leave them below subscribe to the channel blah 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 um thanks for watching and spending a quarter of an hour with me and uh let me know if you have any questions talk to you guys later but oh and uh relax is that my co I, I see it's been so long since i did a video i don't remember my catchphrase just have a great day. Enjoy life. Take it easy. Ciao.